video, I'm going to attempt to show how to use Autodesk Inventor to create the tool paths necessary to machine out this little gusset. Autodesk Inventor has an add-on called Autodesk HSM, which stands for High Speed Machining, that allows us to do this. Once that add-on is installed, you'll have a little CAM tab here. Your machine should already have that installed, um, and you can verify by seeing if there is a CAM tab. You know, open up the parts separately, and the first thing that I want to explain is just what the part is made out of. It's going to be cut out of polycarbonate on the little techno routers in the other room, and the polycarbonate that we have in stock is 0.23 inches thick, and so that is how thick this part is designed as. And so what we're really going to do is just take a small little eighth inch end mill and contour out the individual holes. Then what we're going to do is contour around the perimeter to cut the perimeter out. And so the first step in having to, the first step in setting up these tool paths is to click on the cam tab and go to setup. And setup allows us to choose our coordinate system and our stock, etc. The stock is just the raw material that we're cutting this out of. And we're just going to, under mode, keep it as a relative size box. Relative size box means that the size of the box, it depends upon the size of the part. It's based on the size of the part. And then here they're adding stock to the sides or top and bottom. And we want more material added to the sides, thinking maybe a half inch will be all right. And I don't want any stock added to the top. We are not going to face this down to make it thinner. We're just going to, our final part is going to be the same thickness as the stock itself. Later we could have more advanced things, but this is just a very basic intro. Next thing I want to do is set up the coordinate system. And I'm going to click the, the tab here under setup. And we can see that it's a milling operation, which is what we want. And the origin, I want the origin based upon the actual model, not the stock. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go model box point. And for this particular part, I'm going to choose this corner right there to be our origin location. But I do want to change, and I want the x-axis to be along this direction, and the y-axis to be along this direction. And as you can see, that's not what we have. And so if I go to Model Orientation, I can go Select Z-axis, or Plane, and the x-axis. And if I click that, first thing that is highlighted is the z-axis. And if I click a plane like this, it will ensure that the z-axis is perpendicular to that plane. It already was, so there wasn't any changes. Then the x-axis, I don't want to click a plane. I want to actually click a line. I'm just going to click this line there. And that'll put our x-axis along that line. Now, if it were facing the wrong direction, you could flip it. But it's facing the correct direction that we want. And so we have the x-axis here the y-axis that goes back there, and then the z-axis that is perpendicular to the part. Then I can hit OK. <clears throat> the next thing that we're going to do is just set up the contours on contouring the holes out. So up here, I'm going to select 2D Contour. And it's going to open up this little window under Tool. I'm going to just choose a tool under the sample libraries here. Let's find um, inch, we'll go plastic. And we're just going to cut this out with a eighth inch flat end mill. And so I'm looking for the eighth inch flat end mill, which is here. The reason why I'm choosing that is that's what's already in that small little router. And so I'm just going to go select. Now, um, it gives you some speeds that we're going to be um, using, but, or which are, is defaulted there, but we're going to change the speeds to a much more conservative 
rate so that if something goes wrong, you can stop it. This is a pretty aggressive feed rate um, for um, cutting things out. And so we're going to leave the spindle speed at about 10,000 RPM. But we are going to change the feed per tooth on how fast it's actually going to cut. Right now at 10,000 revolutions a minute at this many feed per tooth, or basically how much of material it takes off per tooth, um, we're going to be traveling at 62 and a half inches per minute, which is much too fast. And so we're going to go um, 0. 0. 0.0005 or five ten thousandths for our feed per tooth for our cutting rate. And then our plunge rate on, under feed per revolution, that's basically how fast it goes down for each revolution that it turns. We're going to go 0 0.0004. Okay, so very slow, just to take it easy when we cut this out. If after you've cut out one, you can see that we can speed things up, we can always come back and change that. But that's where what we call the feeds and speeds are chosen. Our lead in and lead out feed rate, I'm actually going to choose as the same as the cutting feed rate. And so at 0 0.0005 inches or five ten thousandths of an inch for our feed per tooth, we're at 15 inches a minute. And we're just going to type in 15 inches per minute for the lead in, lead out, and our ramping. If we were producing thousands of these under production, we would really try to optimize these things. But this is just a one-off part that we're going to make. So the next thing that we're going to do is go to the um, geometry. And we're going to select the holes. We're not going to drill these holes. We're going to contour the holes, meaning this little eighth inch end mill is going to go and cut around in a circular path to cut out these holes of the right diameter because these holes have a larger diameter than the end mill that we're using. So all I'm doing is selecting each individual hole. It takes a little bit of time. Then the next thing that I'm going to do um, is go here to the height tab and to tell it how deep I want to cut it. Basically, all that we need to worry about in this tab right here is how deep or the bottom height. For the bottom height, we could just say um, the model bottom, because then it would cut to the bottom of the, the piece. Sometimes we want to cut just a little bit deeper to make sure we're going all the way through. So I'm going to go five thousandths of an inch deeper or 0 0.005. Notice I put a negative there and that now gives me a bottom height of negative 0.235 inches because the model is 0.23 inches thick and I'm cutting a little bit deeper. Next thing is this tab um, which talks about the passes. How do you actually want to cut it out? And one thing that we want to do is we want to kind of go down in steps or multiple depths here. So I'm just going to click multiple depths and I'm going to put a maximum roughing step of 0.07 inches or 70 thousandths of an inch. Typically we try to stay right around the radius of the bit in the actual maximum rough step. And so if it's an eighth inch end mill, the diameter is 0.125. That means the radius would be 0 0.0625. And so 0 0.07 or 0 0.06 would be right around the radius of the bit, or the end mill, I should say. And then the next step that I'm going to do is just under linking, I'm just going to go and take a look at what they have here. The linking parameter, it talks a little bit about the lead in and the lead out. Um, we're not going to really worry about that for this little part right now. And so I'm just going to click OK. And it should give us a little visual of what's going to happen. It's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to orient the part a little bit and zoom in on one of these cuts. You can see that 
the lines here represent the path that the end mill is going to take. Basically, it's going to go down, lead in, make a circle, go a little bit deeper, lead in, do another circle. It's going to contour around, clear to the bottom, until the part is cut out, or the hole is cut out. And we're going to do that for every single hole. Yeah, it would be quicker if we just drilled these holes, but we don't have the right drill bit to fit in the router. Um, we do have the drill bits, but we don't have the right collet to hold them, and that would require us to change a tool as well. And so for simplicity, we're just going to contour all these holes, even though it's going to take a lot longer to do. The next thing that we want to do is just do a contour around the, the perimeter. And so we're going to go a 2D contour again. And we're just going to click the perimeter here. And it already gives us the entire perimeter. For the tool, we're just going to keep the same tool. And so we don't have to change anything there. And we're going to keep the same speeds and feeds. And then for depth, we're going to go to the model bottom. And again, let's cut a little bit deeper. So we'll go negative 0 0.005. And then the next thing we're going to do is under passes. For passes, again, under roughing passes, or I'm sorry, not roughing passes, but under multiple depths, we're just going to go 0 0.07. And then finally, under the linking parameters, I don't think we need to change anything there. However, one thing that we need to be aware of is once we cut out this part, as we get near the end, it's going to want to flop around because we've cut out all the material. And so it'd be nice to have some tab, or which is another word for maybe perforation, um, to hold the piece in place. And tabs can be found under the first um, part or this little ge geometry selection. And so if I click tabs, it allows you to choose the width and the height of the tabs. Um, so the width of the tab, I'm going to choose wider than that. Maybe we can choose maybe three quarters of an inch. And let's make it 50 thousandths thick. You can start seeing what that looks like. And they are separated by a distance of one inch. You can actually position the tabs exactly where you would like them if you want to select points. But we'll just have by, by distance. It looks like four tabs there would hold it in place. Now we're just going to go OK. And now we can see the tool path for the perimeter. And you can see that the end mill is actually going to go up to leave the little tabs there to hold the piece in place. I can now click Setup and <clears throat> simulate these contours, the whole thing. And if I have the stock selected, it shows me the stock. And then I can just hit play here. I hit the wrong button here. Simulate and then play. And you can see that the end mill is going down basically four different times to contour out the individual holes. Kind of looks like it's drilling, but it's not. It's contouring those holes. If you zoom in, you can kind of see the end mill going around in a circle to cut out those holes. Yes, it's a slow process. And once all the holes are done, it should show um, the cutout of the perimeter. So we'll give it just a minute here. And then watch what happens on the perimeter. Basically, we'll want to look for um, anything out of the ordinary if, if something's wrong. And so one thing that we want to have are those tabs. And so we're going to look for the tabs. Notice we're not going the full depth. We're going at a maximum of 70 thousandths that we chose, a maximum roughing step. And so that's why it's going down multiple times. And what we kind of want to look for are those tabs to make sure everything is right there. 
And so now that it's gone around four total times, you kind of orient the part so you can see this tabs from both the top view and the bottom view. And then what we would do is unclamp the part and we could cut out the tabs by hand.